everyone. Welcome to the Pen Encoders. In this video, we will learn how to convert any website to an Android application. To show you how the final project will look like, I have created a mo mobile application of my website Penguin Coders. This is the website and I have created a mobile application for my website which is the Penguin Coders app. I will show you how it looks like. So the Penguin Coders app just loads the mobile website, mobile view of my website onto this and I can easily browse the whole website easily inside my app. It saves you a lot of time for development and if you are not a very good Android developer and if you want to create an Android application for your website, this could be a very easy tutorial for you to follow upon and have an Android application for your website too. To let you know that you are not alone in this process and even some very big companies use the mobile website of their own to create an Android application. I will be showing you one such example which is of Quora. So Quora is a very popular question answer website and it's a very popular website but as you can see on the website it's just the web view of their uh, mobile website. I'll show you how it looks like on the web. So this is the Quora website on how it looks on the desktop. Now if I want to see how it looks like on a mobile site, I'll press Fn plus F12 and I'll reload the page. So this will take me to the mobile view of the Quora website. This is the website how it looks like and this is the mobile application. You can see everything is similar and, and if you go on internet and search how is the Quora website, Quora mobile application made, you will find that it's this is just the web view of the whole application. It's not exactly the web view but they have also added some features such as the navigation buttons at the bottom and uh, drawer layout at the side which is custom. But the main content what you see on the mobile app is in web view of the mobile website. So we will try to implement this in our Android application. Let's move on to the tutorial. To create the Android application, open up your Android Studio and start a new Android project. I'll choose the empty activity for my project and click on next. The name of my application will be the same as of my website and I'll keep it as Penguin Coders. I can leave the package name to the default one and the save location also. Language should be chosen as Java because we will be implementing a Java application. The minimum SDK required can be left the default as Android Studio suggests you or you can choose the minimum Android SDK because this application is very simple and it will be approximately supported in all the devices. Click on finish and we have the loading project screen. Yeah, after the project is loaded, we will see two files activity main and main activity open for us. In the activity main, I'll be writing the design layout for my for my application. Instead of using the constraint layout, I'll use a very simple relative layout to have my web view. I'll be adding a relative layout to my application and I'll be adding the necessary attributes Android layout width and layout height. Press Alt Enter to add the schema layout width. I'll be keeping this as match parent because I require the application to cover the entire screen and Android layout height will be match parent. This sums up the relative layout and we need a single element inside our relative layout which will be web view. So for the web view we want the application to be fully full screen so that I'll so I'll keep the Android layout width as match parent and the height as match parent. I also need an ID attribute for my web view so that I can use this in writing the Java code Android ID equals plus ID web view. Yeah, this sums up the web view and we are completed with the design of the application. Also, I'll go to main activity dot Java where we will be defining the entire application logic and the whole code. I'll be defining some local variables the web view I'll be defining it as web view and 
now I need to initialize the web view. I can initialize by find view by id r dot id dot web view, which would refer to the web view element I just created in main activity main dot xml. Now to load any website, I can just create web view dot load URL and I can write the name of the URL or your mobile website which you want to load. I will be adding https www.pinmincoders.net This is the mobile website I want to load on my Android application. And if you want very basic functionalities, so considering that my application is almost complete. But since most of the websites today have JavaScript features enabled in them, I want my web view to in handle JavaScript also. By default, web view doesn't support JavaScript, so I need to add add in parameter to that. So web view dot get settings dot set JavaScript enable. I'll set is that true. And now my mo mobile website and the mobile application loading my website can display JavaScript elements also. This completes my basic Android application and with this you can load a mobile website into an Android application but it has a few limitations which I'll be talking about. The first limitation is suppose if you browse on the application in your mobile website to a deeper extent by clicking on their links and all and if you press the systems back button you will be directly taken out of the application which you don't want. So for that I need to overwrite the on key down button so that I will be able to navigate properly inside the web view and I will be not thrown out of the mobile application. To write the function I will write the on key down function here. I will overwrite that function. So public boolean on key down. takes the parameters at int key code and key event. So if key code equals key event dot key code back. So suppose if I press the back button then the key code will be key code back and if my web view can go back, web view dot can go back. If my web view can go back and if I press the back button, I should be taken back to the uh, URL from where I have gone back. So I'll write it as this dot web view dot go back. This will allow me to navigate easily inside the mobile application and I'll not be thrown out of the app and I'll return this as true. Suppose if I cannot go back to the mobile website, suppose if I've just launched the application, then I need to go out of the application for that I'll write return super dot on key down, which is the default system handler and I'll pass in the arguments key code, which suppose I have pressed the back button and the event. So this otherwise if my if I have pressed the key code back and if I can go back, I'll be going back. Otherwise, I'll be exiting from the application. This solves the first issue of going back and forth inside the mobile app. The second issue is suppose if you click on any link inside the app, you will be redirected to the external browser and you will not be able to continue in the app for any link. So this will be a very inconsistent behavior and we want the user to stay our, on our app only and not go to the external browser. So we need a custom web view client for that and we need to add that features here. For that you can add a new class or a new web custom web client which I'll be adding below and show you how it is done. So I'll be adding class custom view Web, custom web view client we should extend the web view client interface
and in this I'll be initializing some variables such as private activity because I need to pass the current instance of my activity to this client so I'll be using this and I need to create a constructor public custom review client and the constructor I will pass my activity instance so this dot activity equals activity I will initialize my instance variable to the past activity variable and we need to override two functions here which are should override URL loading so these two functions I'll show you how it uh, how it is done override public boolean should override URL loading and in the first function we need to pass the web view I'll be passing web view object and the string URL the URL which you want to load if you want all the URLs which are there in the mobile app want you want to load them into the application only and not get out of the uh, mobile app to an external browser you can write here return false or you can customize this function more so that only the uh, links which you want should be opened in the application should open here otherwise they will be redirected to the external browser for now for simplicity I'll be using return false here to load all the links inside my application only the other function is the similar one and we need to just public boolean should override URL loading web view here we have to pass the web view and we also have to pass a web resource request so I'll be passing both variables both parameters here and I will also return here return false now to understand how these two functions are working see here these two functions are similar in name but the parameters are different this function is for API level less than 24 so if you want because it's depreciated in API 24 so if you if you want to support any devices which are the which are of API level less than 24 such as Android lollipop and all you have to write this function and if you want to support the uh, devices of API level greater than 24 API level greater than or equal to 24 then such as nougat Android nougat you have to use the web resource request should override URL loading function return false means you have to load the existing URL whatever you are getting inside inside the same application if I do it return true then all the links will be loaded in external browser only after we set the custom web view client we need to make sure that it's implemented in our code so I will create a new object of web view client custom web view client client equals new custom web view client and I'll pass my activity so I'll pass the this object now I need to make sure that my web view uses this client so I'll write here web view dot set web view client as the client so this completes the main activity dot java and I can see some warning is displayed here it says using set javascript enabled can introduce excesses vulnerabilities into your application okay so I think if, if you are making an application for your own website you might be very careful about how it is functioning on the website on the mobile app and you are just trying to make copy of this on to the android application so you can suppress this warning and the warning should be gone so I suggest that you take care of the cross site scripting vulnerabilities on the mobile app side and not here uh, or you can customize this 
web view further and you can always make it a interesting and more beautiful app one final thing which we need to do is to is to add in permission in the manifest file to so i'll open my android manifest.xml and i will add the permission so that i can use the internet for my mobile application so i can add a uses permission attribute here and i can add android dot permission dot internet this is necessary because your application will require internet permission to work otherwise it will fail to load your mobile app and also we require one more thing after adding the internet permission you need to add one more object here which you can do uh, you will be requiring one more attribute here android allow clear text clear text traffic uses clear text traffic equals true because this will allow https sites to be served on your web view without this it would be uh, if you try to load an https site but you have given the url here as http it wouldn't work so you need to add android uses clear text traffic equals true so we have changed we have changed in android main activity main.xml then the main activity.java we have written the full code and android manifest.xml after this your application is completed and i'll be showing you the demo of this application now also you can add an icon to your app by going to the app and clicking on new image asset you can choose any image from for setting up the icon of your uh, application so i have my logo on desktop i'll be choosing this logo for my mobile app if you want a detail instruction on how, how to set an icon for your mobile app you can visit my previous tutorial the link will be in the description given below so this is the app which i have made and i will now add a background layer and the background dot and the back, i will choose a color and the color should be white i'll choose the color as white so this completes my application and yes and i think it looks it looks perfect i'll click on next and it will replace all the icons yeah so finish yeah now i can show you the demo of the application on my android device to do that i'll click on run you can see that i have my penguin coders application installed and see you can all also see that i have my application set up and it's loading the website correctly and on click of any button i'll be going back and forth into the website and if i choose back then i'll be going to the previous screen and now on the home screen if i click on back button i'll be redirected to the home screen this completes our application for now you can further customize this web view application by adding custom navigation bars and doing more things in its in your web application such as we saw in other apps such as kura so this will become an starting point for your application web view application and you can proceed it and make it a very good mobile application with minimum effort so with this i end this tutorial and hope you like the tutorial and if you want to see more interesting tutorials you can always subscribe to my channel and if you find this useful you can share it with your friends or like the tutorial for any suggestions and feedback just write it in the comment box thank you